They are the insiders, Chris Johnson, Pierre Lebron, and Darren Dreger. What's going on with Joseph Wall? The Leafs' presumptive number one hasn't played a game, and after bailing before practice on Tuesday, he still hasn't even skated with the team since the start of the regular season. CJ, what's the plan there? Well, there certainly were some alarm bells when Joseph Hall appeared briefly on the ice in Toronto on Tuesday among social media, among, you know, the, the reporters covering the team. But behind the scenes, all is calm. And the feeling is that Joseph Hall is actually progressing quite well here in his return. And I think the Leafs look at the schedule right now, just two weeks uh, two games on the schedule this week, and they just want to be smart. They're making sure he gets back to 100%, not wanting to rush him back here. And so I think you'll see him up the, the workload on the ice in the coming days. Also in the coming days, he will go through some testing. At least we'll have a better idea exactly when he's due to return. But this feeling right now is this is not long-term, nothing to, to freak out about. The Leafs have some time, and they're using it. <laughs> yeah, it's still early, but a bit of a mess in Edmonton right now. 0-3, tied for the worst start in the league. Dregs. The owners have admitted they want to bolster their blue line. The plan was to ride things out and build up some cap space, but is a sense of urgency building now? Well, it might be externally, but not internally, Gino. And everybody can appreciate the cries for an upgrade on D, but that's not going to push the Oilers' management into making a move or a signing. It's too early in the regular season. The fact is, it's a layered issue in Edmonton. First two games, the goaltending wasn't great. Admittedly, the defense has been sketchy, but the primary issue is that the top players for the Edmonton Oilers have not performed up to their level. But we know those guys are going to find their groove. That's what management is counting on, and perhaps they can uh, take a look at an upgrade on defense deeper into the season. Listen, I'm not sure what's more surprising, the Oilers' 0-3 start or the Flames' 3-0 start. Pierre, you spoke with Calgary GM Craig Conroy. Despite the start, many are still anticipating a fire sale again there this year. What did he say about that? And I think Craig Conroy is kind of confused as to why people are expecting that. He's done all the fire sale that he's going to do here for the last 12 to 15 months. The reality is all those core veterans that people think might get moved, they're under contract past this year. We're talking about guys like Kadri and Mackenzie Weger and Blake Coleman. Um, and, you know, and the fact is, Craig Conroy sees those veterans as wanting to be part of this roster transition. He wants them to be part of this roster transition. He doesn't want to tear it down to the studs. He's trying to build the right culture in Calgary and wants those veterans around through that. Uh, last year's NHL draft was quite the spectacle at Sphere in Vegas. And the NHL is already looking to go big again this June, CJ? Yes, everything's on track for them to go to Los Angeles. This has been in the air now for some time. But I think what's interesting here is that the league is looking at Peacock Theater as the likely place where the draft will be held. And that's interesting because it's only about a 7,000-seat venue. It's hosted things like the Grammys and the ESPYs in the past. And with the league moving to a decentralized draft, as we've known they were going to do in 2025, they don't have the same demands in terms of the space needed. And so they can take it to some different kinds of venues. And it does seem that L.A. will be the first one. And I'm sure once we get to 2026 and beyond, you'll, you'll see them taking it to you know non-traditional places it's not just going to be hockey arenas anymore speaking of la the king's gm is in the final year of his current deal any news on rob blake pierre i'll tell you where it's not news and that's within the king's organization uh, rob blake and luke robitaille have a tremendous relationship and they spoke this summer and everyone involved is comfortable that blake would enter this year on an expiring deal the fact is he did the exact same thing last time that he needed a contract. He went through the final year of his deal before he signed. You know, he's entering his eighth year. The Kings have been knocked out in the first round three years in a row. So I think there's some pressure to take the next step. But Rob Blake very much comfortable in that he's in his last year. And he's comfortable to see how his team does this year before they have that conversation again. A big junior hockey meeting coming up this week. So big drags that Gary Bettman is going to be there. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. The NHL Commissioner and Deputy Commissioner Bill Daly planning to attend to address and speak to the group assembled that is the collection of the Con uh, Canadian Hockey League and their leadership core. Now, there's a lot of change that has gone on in the CHL, including at the top of the commissioner's office of all three leagues. So. 
Bettman will address this group. Undoubtedly, this group will want to find out about the NHL's position on the expected NCAA lifting of the ban of CHL players next August. But there's a lot of business that the NHL and the CHL share, so this makes a lot of sense that the commissioner's office would be on hand. They are the insiders, Chris Johnson, Pierre Lebrun, and Darren Dreger.